reached the four hour. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for attending this talk. So today we are very honored to invite Professor Zhen Peng from the China University of Petrolin to give us a talk about machine learning and its application in remote sensing. Um, Professor Zhen received the PhD from the University of York and was he received the KM Scott Prize when he was doing his PhD. He is currently a full professor in the China University of Petroleum and also is the director of a few research centers, including the offshore Amand observation and also the intelligent forecast and detection of disasters. Uh, he received a few best paper awards and was uh, the national science award in China. And he is the editor of a few actually journals and was, he is a very uh, old friend of mine who has been um, collaborating, collaborating with us on a few research projects, including a Loyal Society project and was uh, our recent EU H 2020 project. Uh, Professor Zen's research interests focus on remote sensing and machine learning and was among the vehicle observations. Thank you very much. And Professor Zen, it's your platform. Okay, thank you very much, Trimbo. So, can you see my slide clearly? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you, Trimbo. Thank you for your invitation and uh, introduction. And uh, the talk, uh, the title of my talk is uh, Machine Learning Techniques for Remote Sensing. Uh, my name is uh, Peng Ren, and uh, I am from China University of Petroleum. First of all, let me briefly talk about my university. My university, China University of Petroleum, was established in 1953 in Beijing. It then moved to Dongying in 1969. Dongying has the Shengli oil field, and it is a city of Shandong province. At that time, Nothing of the university was left in Beijing. In 1988, in 1988, the Beijing Graduate School was restored. Since 1988, um, China University of Petroleum is China. That is the one in Shandong province. And the China University of Petroleum, Beijing, that is the one originating from the restored graduate school have gradually become independent universities of each other. Currently in China, there are two universities in four places sharing the name of China University of Petroleum. And one is China University of Petroleum, Beijing. It has Beijing campus, Kramai campus. The Kramai campus is close to Kramai oil field and in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. And the other is the China University of Petroleum East China. This is where I am. It has the Dongying branch campus and it uh, has another campus, the Qingdao campus. The Qingdao campus is the main campus of the China University of Petroleum East China. It is located at Shandong Peninsula east coast of China. It has around 1,700 academic faculty members. It has 19,000 undergraduates, 9,000 postgraduates, and around 1,000 overseas students. The subject geological resources and geological engineering, and the subject petroleum and natural gas engineering rank A+. Plus. That is the highest score in the latest China University uh, subject rankings. Okay, here is where we are. We are in the Qingdao city. It takes one and a half hours to Beijing, to Shanghai, and to Seoul by flight. It takes uh, three hours uh, flight to Hong Kong and to K Tokyo. It is a good place for sailing. It has beautiful coastlines 
and it is famous for traditional beers. And uh, this is how we look. This is a, a picture of my university campus. As you can see, we are a few miles from the mountain and a few yards to the ocean. So it's very beautiful. This is the symbolic sculpture of my university. The name of it is Creating the Sun. And these are some uh, top overview of my university campus. It's beautiful and you are welcome to visit my university. Okay, the contents of my talk. In my talk, I will talk about some remote sensing basics at first, and then I will present five machine learning techniques for five specific remote sensing tasks. And the five uh, remote sensing tasks belongs to five types of uh, machine learning, and they are marked in red. And uh, the five remote sensing tasks are marked in light blue. Okay, first, remote sensing basics. NASA gave the definition of uh, remote sensing. It is the science and art of identifying, observing, and measuring an object without coming into direct contact with it. So typical remote sensing refers to sensing objects or things from a remote position. The platforms can be satellites, airplanes. The sensors can be optical, hyperspectral, and a microwave. More recently, more generalized remote sensing also refers to sensing remote objects or things. Here, a platform can be AUVs, into stations, and the sensors can be optical and uh, acoustic. Before our uh, new techniques, here are some basic questions to remote sensing that are often asked. The first question is, are remote sensing data of uh, the format of images? The answer is most time, yes, but not always. For example, one point observation do not give rise to uh, images and uh, one point observation is very uh, common in remote sensing. Data of uh, uh, data of uh, wind fields look like images, but are in fact not. They are just grid data. Microwave imaging data from uh, form images that are different from what human eyes can see. Hyperspectral images have more spectra than optical RGB images. So uh, remote sensing data are not always image data. The second question is, can we achieve good results if we uh, straightforwardly apply of the shelf machine learning techniques to remote sensing data? The answer is sometimes yes, but most time no. The remote sensing data requires specific treatment. This is the aim of our talk. Okay, uh, I will present the first technique an unsupervised learning technique for mixed pixel decomposition. Uh, this, in this task, um, we address the data of uh, hyperspectral images. Here are some uh, examples of hyperspectral images. Uh, the hyperspectral images have uh, two properties. One is that they have a high spectral resolution. One pixel may have over 1,000 bands, many more bands than the optical images with RGB three bands. And the second property is that uh, the hyperspectral images uh, usually have a low spatial resolution. That is, one picture, one pixel may cover various objects. These two properties give rise to the problem of uh, mixed pixel decomposition. Mixed pixel decomposition is also called 
a spectral mixture analysis. Given one hyperspectral images like this, uh, in this hyperspectral image uh, unit, there may be mixed pixels. Mixed pixels, a mixed pixel is a pixel with more than one object. For example, this pixel is a mixed pixel. It has uh, five objects, including lens, house, grass, car, and water. In the hyperspectral image, there may also be there may also be end members. An end member is a pure pixel with a unique object. And we can see here are some examples of end members. The task of mixed pixel decomposition is to estimate the proportion of each object in the mixed pixel. For example, this is the mixed pixel. We can consider it as a linear system of the end, of the end members. As we can see, uh, the mixed pixel decomposition task can be solved by uh, solving the linear system. Um, and uh, we can get uh, the proportion alpha. Uh, if we have the end members, this problem is very easy to solve. Here gives us another problem, is how we can extract the end members from the uh, hyper, uh, hyperspectral image. This is the problem of end member extraction. And for the end member extraction, there are normally two challenges. Uh, the first challenge is how many end members are there in the hyperspectral image? One possible solution is that we can assume we know the number of end members in the hyperspectral image. But uh, as we know, we do not uh, like to accept this because it is impra impra impractical for us to, to know um, how many end members are there. And the second challenge is how can we automatically extract the end members? One possible solution to this challenge is uh, we can identify the far ends in the feature space as end members, but how can we define far is a big challenge. Here, our novel solution is uh, we, are we are motivated by the clustering method of a dominant set. And we introduce a technique of a divergent subset to address the two challenges. The divergent subset uh, works uh, as follows. We consider a hyperspectral image as, uh, as a hyperspectral picture set and define the subset of pixels that are most different from one another as the divergent subset of the hyperspectral pixel set. The divergent subset is characterized by two conditions. The first condition is that any pixel, it's any pixel's divergent grid is positive. The second condition is that any additional pixel would make its divergent grid negative. Here are the formulas for the two equations. And the first equation automatically extracts and counts the end members. And the second condition automatically excludes the non-end members, excludes the non-end members. And we can compute the divergent subset in terms of the iterative updates as follows. Uh, I will not go to the math detail and uh, I will refer you to uh, my publication for these details. And uh, we can see this is a typical unsupervised learning method because no labeled data are required for training. We use the divergent subset to green ELGA area estimation. Here, we use the satellite data of GUCI data. The spatial resolution of the GUCI data is five, uh, 500 meter. And uh, we know 500 meter in, the, this, 
in each pixel, one pixel may have may not be full of green algae. We use the divergent subset to extract a member of a green alga and uh, do mixed pixel uh, decomposition to estimate the accurate green alga area. And here is some uh, illustrative result and the result. Uh, the publication reporting the uh, divergent sub subset is uh, here. We published this paper in IEEE transactions on geoscience and remote sensing. And we also release our code for public evaluation. Okay, this is the first technique I present. And then we go to the second technique, a supervised learning technique for cloud removal. First, let's review supervised learning. Uh, given an input to the model, and the model gives an output, and we compare the output with the ground truth, and we use this to training to train the model, and uh, this is the procedure of uh, supervised learning. And here, both input and the ground truth data are required to train the model. If we want to use uh, Supervise the learning to uh, for the purpose of cloud removal. We will do like this. We give one cloudy image into a cloud removal model, and the model gives a cloud removed image as a result. And then we compare the cloud removed image with the cloud free image for training the model. And here, both cloudy and the cloud-free image are required to train the cloud removal model. And we can see here is a big challenge, is how can we capture both cloudy and cloud-free images for the same thing at the same time? As we can see, uh, one thing can be either cloudy or cloud-free. It cannot uh, be, uh, be uh, both cloudy and cloud free at the same time. So it's very difficult for us to capture both cloudy and cloud free images for the same thing at the same time. We will address this challenge and construct cloudy and cloud free image pairs for the same thing. To do this, we develop a method of cloudy image arithmetic it has two operators. The first operator is cloud self subtraction operator. This operator extracts cloud ingredient images from cloudy images of weak, weak texture regions, typically C areas. And the second operator, cloud addition to thin operator, it incorporates the cloud ingredient it incorporates the cloud uh, ingredient image into cloud free land images, synthesize cloudy things. And here are some synthesized cloudy and cloud free image pairs. Okay, let's go a little bit uh, deeper into the details of the two operators. First, the operator of the cloud self subtraction. Here, we use the alpha percentile as a threshold for extracting cloud ingredients from the C areas. And we also do some kind of compensation. And uh, uh, here we get the cloud ingredient image from the cloudy image of a C area. The second operator, cloud addition to thin operator. Uh, in, uh, from the previous operator, we have obtained uh, the cloud ingredient image. And here we will in, incorporate this cloud, uh, cloud ingredient image into a cloud free land image. To this end, we follow the physical mechanism of cloudy image formation. And we do some kind of atm atmospheric light uh, correction. And then we obtained the synthesized cloudy thing image 
That is, uh, we incorporate the cloud ingredient into the cloud-free land image and obtain the uh, synthesized the cloudy thing image. And here, uh, with uh, both operators, we have the overall cloudy image arithmetic. We can see the operation is like this. First, a cloudy thing is uh, input into cloud self subtraction and get the cloud ingredient image. And then we incorporate the cloud ingredient image uh, into the cloud free land image based on cloud addition to thing and get the uh, synthesized cloudy thing image. And here we can see from the cloudy image arithmetic, a, an input ground truth data pair for training a cloud removable model is obtained. And we, we go on uh, see, we go on to introduce uh, what we can do the training with the aid of a cloudy image arithmetic to train to train a deep uh, to train a cloud removable model. Here we have uh, the cloud free image here, and uh, we use cloud we use cloudy image arithmetic and get a, a synthesized the cloudy image, and then we input the cloudy image the synthesized cloudy image into the cloud removable model. And uh, we got the cloud removed image. And we compare the cloud removed image with the cloud free image and use this for training, for training the cloud removal model. And here we can see the synthesized the cloudy image and the cloud free image pair form a high quality input and ground truth data pair for training the uh, cloud removal model. And here, this is uh, how we can construct uh, both cloudy and cloud free image pairs to train a cloud removable model. And uh, we use this method to train the model and use the model to do the cl uh, cloud removal and get the result here. And uh, the bottom is the publication reporting the cloudy uh, image arithmetic. And we also release our code for public uh, evaluation. And here is the code link. Okay, let's go on talking about uh, the second, uh, uh, the third technique. It is a semi-supervised learning technique for hyperspectral image classification. At first, we will talk from adversarial to uh, mutual guide learning. We all know generative adversarial nets. There are two nets. One is a generator and the other is a discriminator. Uh, the generator generate uh, fake data and uh, uses uh, them to deceive the discriminator. The discriminator tells the fake data from real data and uh, uh, penalized the generator. This is a zero sum game. In contrast to this zero sum philosophy, we propose a, a mutual guide paradigm. Here, there are also two classifiers. We call them base classifiers. Uh, the base classifier A provides some guide data to promote the performance of the base classifier B. And in turn, the base classifier B provides, provides some guide data to the base uh, classifier A to promote its performance. And the, we can see here, the two base classifiers gain uh, mutual benefits from each other. It is a mutual beneficial. So here we develop our novel mutual guide paradigm for machine learning. And uh, we can see the mutual guide paradigm is a, a typical semi-supervised learning strategy. 
because it automatically assigns labels to unla assigns labels to unlabeled data and thus augments the training data set. Here, I will talk about how we can implement mutual guide training. And given the same small number of training data to the two base classifier, classifier A and classifier B, and they are trained and they, they give some high confidence classification results on the test data and they augment to each other. And these uh, high confidence classification result are incorporated into the training data for A. And A's, um, A's uh, high confidence classification result data are incorporated into the training set for, for training B. And we can see from this way, uh, both classifiers provide high confidence classification results to each other and augments each other's training data set. And gradually, both classifiers are trained with more uh, training data than the original small training data. So uh, at last, both of uh, the classifiers are well trained because they are trained with more training data, much more, many more than the original training data. And they are well trained. And finally, when they do some uh, classification result, they will make agreement and disambiguity and give the final classification result. This is the implementation of uh, uh, mutual guide training. And uh, here are some uh, requirements for implementing mutual guide. First, uh, the two base classifiers should be randomly initialized because you know the two base classifiers are the same have the same structure if they are the initial if they are initialized the same they will give each other the same high confidence uh, classification result so it's not what we want so we need uh, they can be randomly initialized and the second requirement is uh, they should uh, be able to identify high confidence classification result because of this, these results are considered as labeled data for each other in the new iteration of training. To satisfy these two requirements, we use extreme learning machines as our uh, base classifiers because the first layer of uh, the extreme learning, learning machines are randomly initialized. It uh, satisfies the first uh, um, requirement and uh, it has classification scores and uh, it, uh, the scores, high score means the high confidence classification result. It uh, satisfies the second uh, requirement. But here we know we can use alternative classifiers as base classifiers. I would uh, encourage you to make some uh, uh, replacement of uh, these kind of uh, classifiers and uh, develop your own mutual guide training strategy. And uh, here is the result uh, for hyperspectral image uh, classification. And at the bottom is the, the publication reporting the mutual guide framework. And we also make our code publicly available and uh, you can use it and you can also use, use your own, develop your own uh, base classifiers uh, to develop the new uh, mutual guide uh, strategies. Okay, the fourth technique. Uh, the fourth technique is uh, uh, a reinforcement learning technique for underwater image enhancement. As we know, Underwater images are not as clear as land images, and most of them need to be enhanced to obtain better visibility. And currently, we often use deep learning to uh, achieve underwater image enhancement. Uh, to do so, an uh, underwater image is input into a deep learning model and obtain and gives an enhanced image. And we can see here 
the deep learning model tend to be black box of nonlinear mapping. And we are not clear what happens inside the deep learning model. In order to address this limitation, uh, we develop a reinforcement learning paradigm. It is a white box of making uh, sequential decisions. And uh, given an, uh, given an uh, underwater image into, uh, into a deep uh, DNQ, uh, DQN, uh, the DQN is deep Q network. The, the output of the DQN is not an enhanced image, but a choice of uh, a choice from a list of basic image enhancement algorithms. As we can see in this list, we have a red plus, we have a gamma correction, we have a white balance, we have a, a dark channel prior. They are all very basic uh, image enhancement algorithms and different algorithms have a different effects. And here, according to the input on the water image, the DQN selects which uh, basic image algorithm it will use to get the, the enhanced, uh, enhanced image. And then based on the enhanced image, it is input into the DQN again, and the DQN's output is to selecting uh, from the list of uh, uh, candidate uh, basic uh, uh, image er uh, enhancement algorithms and uh, select uh, uh, an image enhancement algorithm to process the enhanced image and uh, get a furthermore enhanced image. And uh, we will do it uh, so on and uh, so forth. And uh, finally, we got uh, uh, the final enhanced image. And here, uh, after the D DNQ give a choice, we say that this is an action. We take uh, many actions and uh, we get the final enhanced image. And to train the DAQ, we use the reinforcement learning strategy. As we can see, the process is very clear, is transparent because at each action, we know what kind of uh, algorithm we are using to enhance the image. So it is a white box strategy. Okay, here is the, the actions we uh, select. These are the list of uh, basic uh, uh, image enhancement algorithms. And we, uh, at each action, uh, the DNQ selects from uh, one of these action, uh, one of these algorithm, and use it to enhance the underwater image. And here is the uh, reinforcement learning paradigm. And uh, uh, the diagram we can see that here we use the quality increment as the reward for training the uh, DQN. The DQN is the uh, agent network here. And then gradually we get the finally enhanced uh, on the water image. And we can see here uh, from the start, here are some uh, uh, preliminary uh, experimental results. Uh, from the very beginning start, and uh, we know what happened at uh, each step. You know, every, every action, every um, image enhancement algorithm is transparent to us. We know what happens at each uh, step and we know through what processes we obtain the final uh, enhanced image. So this is a totally white box strategy. And here is some experimental result we uh, obtained from the reinforcement learning strategy. And the bottom is our uh, publication reporting this method. And we also make our code publicly available and we encourage you to use it and maybe use your own uh, agent and Q network as a replacement as the original one. And uh, we hope you can get a better result with your replacement. Okay, the final technique. 
The final technique is a meta-learning technique for remote sensing image captioning. First, let's have a look at the common part and the different part between the remote sensing image classification and the captioning tasks. Uh, here is a diagram for uh, a diagram depicting the remote sensing image classification task. Uh, the data uh, goes into um, a feature extractor. As we can see, the data are some uh, remote sensing images. The data go into uh, the feature extractor and then to the classifier. And then we have uh, the uh, classification result. Um, the classification result is, uh, uh, is uh, the class labels. And this is the task of uh, remote sensing image classification. And uh, the remote sensing image captioning. Here is the diagram depicting the task of remote sensing image captioning. The data, the data is a, a remote sensing image goes into uh, the feature extractor and then to a uh, caption generator. And then we have uh, the captioning result. The captioning result is a descriptive text for the remote sensing image. As we can see, for the two tasks, uh, the common part are the feature extractor module, and the different parts are uh, the subsequent module. In the classification task, there is a classifier, and in the captioning task, uh, the uh, the module behind the feature extractor is a caption generator. Okay, uh, in traditional machine learning, the classification task and the captioning task are considered as isolated tasks and they have nothing to do with each other. Uh, but uh, meta-learning aims at learning how to learn. So the meta-learning for remote sensing captioning can be learning captioning from classification. In the light of this observation, uh, we propose our meta-captioning uh, meta framework. Here, as we, uh, we see, uh, the captioning task and uh, the classification task have the common part of a feature extractor. We will see whether we can use the feature extractor of the classification task to support the feature extractor of the captioning task. Here, the thing is, usually there are a lot of uh, training data for train the classification task, and uh, there are comparatively insufficient uh, captioning label labeled data for training the captioning task, especially for the remote sensing data. So we can use the classification task to support the captioning task and. Uh, this can give us a, a very good uh, a scenario that uh, the captioning task at this time with the support from the classification task, they can only uh, take only very uh, small number of uh, captioning uh, labeled data for training and they can give very good performance. Okay, here is our detailed implementation of mental captioning. Here we can see we have uh, two support tasks and we have uh, a target task. The target task is our goal is remote sensing image captioning. And uh, the two support tasks are image classification tasks. And the first task is a natural image classification task. We use the sufficient class labeled data to train the support task one. And then we have a very a good feature, very well-trained parameter values for the feature extractor. We consider the parameter values uh, of the feature extractor as the meta feature one, and we transfer these features to the support task two. The support task two is remote sensing image data, uh, image classification. And for the remote sensing image classification task, 
there are also comparatively sufficient training data. And uh, here we got a more comprehensive feature uh, parameters, uh, parameter values for the feature extractor. And then we transfer, we consider the parameter values of the feature extractor as meta features too, and transfer them to the uh, feature vector of the target task, that is the remote sensing image captioning task. At, uh, uh, in this case, in this scenario, we can see the feature extraction uh, already have uh, very well trained parameter values. Here, what we required, what we need is we need a small number of uh, training data for train the caption generator. So here we only require a small number of uh, um, caption data uh, labeled data, and we can use this small number of caption labeled data to train the uh, target task. The target task already obtained some very well trained feature extractor parameters from the previous two support tasks. And we can use very small data to train a good performance target task, that is the remote sensing image captioning task. And here is the experimental result. And we can see we have a very good performance for uh, generating the descriptive contests for remote sensing images in the condition of a very small caption labeled data for training. The bottom is uh, the publication reporting our uh, meta captioning um, uh, method. And we also uh, release our code for public use. This is the link for our uh, method. Okay, conclusions and future work. Uh, I should say sorry because my talk do not go deep into either equations or experimental analysis, because I think uh, uh, both of them can be found in the publications. And uh, the following tables just uh, include some concluding remarks. Here uh, in my talk, I presented five uh, machine learning techniques. They belong to five types of uh, machine learning, and uh, they are developed to uh, handle uh, some five different uh, remote sensing tasks. And uh, they all have uh, advantages. And uh, there are also many things we can do in the future for make uh, these techniques go further. Uh, for the divergent subset, I didn't talk about how to uh, measure the similarity between the members in my talk. Um, and here we can uh, point out that a more comprehensive similarity measure will make the divergent subset work better. And uh, in the cloudy image arithmetic, we didn't consider the situation of shadows. And uh, I think uh, the cloudy image arithmetic can be extended to address, to generate some shadows. And in the mutual guide, I didn't uh, uh, theoretically analyze its uh, uh, PAC generalization. I didn't talk about its VC bound. I think that is something uh, worthy investigation. And uh, for the DNQ underwater enhancement, all the configurations, all the actions are discontinuous. They are discrete actions. And I think whether we can make some continuous configurations in the future. And uh, for the meta captioning, we just uh, uh, we just aimed to increase uh, the training effectiveness of uh, the captioning model, but uh, we neglect uh, to um, to describe how many objects are there in the. Uh, in the remote sensing image. And I think in the future work, we may work on the quantity description of uh, uh, the remote sensing images. Okay, this is the end of my talk. Is there any 
uh, questions. Thank you, Professor Pong. Uh, Pong, uh, Pong. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very clearly. That's a very, very good and clear talk. So we will stop recording now so that the other uh, the, the audiences can ask questions following the request. If you have any questions,